Advisor. So I am on board with Hugo Spowers, the creator of this wonderful machine, the River Simple Raza hydrogen car. And as we're driving around the Isle of Man TT course, let's have a chat about what the car is, what it does, and the whole thought behind it. So Hugo, tell me a little bit about the Raza and the machine we're in. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an electric car, but it's got no batteries. And so even the Toyota and the Hyundai hydrogen cars have still got a battery pack. We've got a, a hydrogen fuel cell and all the energy is stored in, uh, in a cylinder of hydrogen. And it's 1.7 kilos of hydrogen, which gives us a range of about 300 miles. That sits behind us here? And that or? sits behind us. There's, there's a tank behind us and the fuel cell, which is a, a 10 kilowatt fuel cell designed and built for forklifts for Walmart warehouses. Oh. Uh, now that's just powerful enough to power three domestic kettles, but it's enough to keep this car running at 60 miles an hour. And we have, but we have an acceleration of 0 to 60 in uh, miles an hour in nine and a half seconds. Uh, and the, uh, about 80, over 80% 80 of the power for that acceleration comes from a bank of capacitors. Now those capacitors are filled up by uh, braking. Uh, when we brake our electric motors, we have electric motors in all four wheels, they generate electricity and we have a phased braking system, so when you press the brake pedal, all the valves close in the hydraulic circuit so the friction brakes don't work and all the braking is electrical. We can recover 55% of the kinetic energy of the car back into those capacitors and that provides the extra, extra power we need for acceleration. So we've got very good acceleration, uh, straight line acceleration constant up to 60 miles an hour and it can cruise at 60 miles an hour but it can't go any faster than that and um, and the, the advantage of, of uh, uh, this powertrain very lightweight it's a very lightweight powertrain so we can have a lightweight car so you need less power to drive you in the first place mm -hmm. and we end up with a, f uh, a fuel consumption equivalent in calorific terms to a petrol car doing 250 miles to the gallon well, that's pretty cool. And the whole car weighs well, about as much as the battery pack on a Tesla or something? A little bit less than the battery pack in a Tesla. So 600 yeah, six, 650 kilos is our that's, car. That's primarily because we're sitting in a carbon fibre tub. Well, it's, it, it, it is a carbon fibre tub which is, is light, yeah. but I'd say that we haven't really made a lightweight car by focusing on making all the components light. The car is light because we focused on efficiency and designing a powertrain which is extremely efficient and weighs very little and if the powertrain is lighter you don't need such a strong chassis. So the weight of the chassis comes down so you need less power and, and the, the car is light as a result of the system level design approach. And, um, uh, and as you make the car lighter, you make it more efficient, so the powertrain gets lighter. When the car's lighter, you don't need power-assisted systems for uh, steering and brakes, so you get rid of the weight and cost of those uh, power-assisted systems. All the time, everything gets lighter. And with a lighter car, for instance, you need narrower tyres with still the same grip because you're, they're carrying less weight. And as the tyre gets narrower, you don't need the power-assisted steering and so on and so forth. So uh, we talk about mass decompounding and it's all a, a result of the design approach rather than a focus on making each component lighter. It just sounds like the type of car of the future that Colin Chapman would have loved. <laughs> yes, well, uh, to my mind, Colin Chapman is near unto God and, uh, and yes. certainly two of our design team worked under Colin Chapman in their youth which is pretty amazing. So his, his DNA is sort of going into the future with this. Well, that's, that's a nice thought, yes. Thank you very much, yes. Uh, Jim Reiter, who did the carbon fiber structure for the car, he um, uh, started under Colin Chapman on the DeLorean project. Wow. And, uh, and he did designed, for instance, the carbon structure for the McLaren F1. Wow. Um, and Jeff Aldridge, who did uh, all the detailed design of our electric motors and suspension. He was one of the two designers responsible for the Lotus 77 Grand Prix car. Well, <laughs> back in the mid 70s. So there's some serious firepower behind us in terms of design and, and thinking and... And we have a mixture. I think there's three 
broadly speaking, three different areas we've recruited from. Motorsport, I'm from a motorsport background myself. Um, automotive industry, which is a very different industry. We have some people from the automotive industry, mm. um, from Aston Martin and Dyson and Rivian, yeah. um, but also from the aerospace industry. And the mixture of those three cultures, mm. I think, is really very powerful. And, uh, and, and there's certainly some very bright people in the automotive industry, but uh, we wouldn't want to recruit purely from the automotive industry because I think there's a lot of things that are wrong with mm. the way the auto industry goes about you things. You get a different thinking as well, right? You get Absolutely. a fresh pair of eyes when you... We want the intelligence from the automotive industry without the baggage that the automotive industry has. Uh, but but the, for us, the top speed and the acceleration are completely independent variables. Okay. In a conventional car, um, if you want better acceleration, you need more power, yeah. and you end up with a higher top speed. So your acceleration and your top speed are very tightly coupled in engineering terms. Uh, but for us, they're quite independent. Stop on a go pedal on the floor or a brake and accelerator, but there's no gears. Uh, it's not an automatic, there's no gear changes when you're moving. It's simply single speed direct drive in all the motors. Uh, but when you're stationary, you can change gear between forward, neutral, and reverse. There's these buttons on the dashboard. But you can only change gear when you're stationary with your foot on the brake pedal. And when you're moving, we have two dials. As you would previously have had a speedo and a taco. Uh, we've got a speedo and we've got an econometer as we call it and that is a, a, it's a, a reading of the instantaneous energy consumption of the car but it's not a linear scale, it's actually a logarithmic scale and it gets up to infinity and as you can see now it's going beyond infinity, um, it's going green and that means that is energy flow back into the car when you're braking. And, if you're, and we want that to be a, a basic tool that you use as an everyday um, tool for driving that you get used to, rather than a bit of gamification or anything like that. And if you're driving efficiently, you want to keep that needle as high as possible.